everyone, you're all very welcome along to Series 4, Episode 11 of Champ.ie's Road to Cheltenham Challenge, brought to you in association with Boyle Sports, Goran Park Racecourse and Syndicates.Racing. Talking all things Cheltenham, the top performances over the last seven days and answering your hashtag big questions every Monday. Barry and Ronan will once again go head-to-head by giving one anti-post selection each week on the 2024 festival in March. But kicking away in between the final two flights is Jay DeGrugge and Brian Hayes. Readily gone cleared at the final flight. Jay DeGrugge over by four lengths to a penny a hundred. Look to the west, pink in the park. Judicious Elaine is next, but it's Jade de Grugy fulfilling her potential in the Solarina Mare. Showing over 44 points profit from 132 point stakes since 2020, the Champ.ie Road to Cheltenham Challenge Show is this season bidding to secure four years of anti post profit in a row. The lads look forward to discussing your Week 11 selections, and don't forget it's important to update your full anti post portfolio in the comments to help us keep track. Give this video a like for more Cheltenham content and be sure to subscribe to the Champ.ie YouTube channel, Ireland's premier horse racing podcast. Enjoy the show. Boyle Sports. Don't just bet. Choose wisely. And the show rolls on. Welcome back to episode number 11 of the Road to Cheltenham Challenge. Of uh, course, series number four of the Golden Groom back fresh off the back of his trip to the Alps. And Ronan Groom, it was a late night. You missed it in the Lord Bagnall, but... Uh, plenty of songs sang, and uh, Mark Landers, I discovered, 1999 captain of uh, the Cork All Ireland hurling winning team, was the singing The Boys of Fair Hill. You missed out. I'd say you were singing The Boys of Fair Hill as well. It was a fantastic day uh, down in Gorn Park, obviously, to yesterday's day, over 9,000 people uh, on a Thursday. And uh, of course, uh, that's uh, some that's some going in fairness considering. Everyone needed to book the Friday off work. It was a pretty late night, shall we say. And good fans of the show as well. Um, Jimmy O'Grady, big shout out to the lads from Kilkenny, who actually got us back to the Lord Bagnall. And um, we had a, a steak and, and, and talk tactics for, I suppose, the remainder of the year and what the lads would like to see on the show as well. But great bunch of fellas. And um, yeah, we met them inside in the in the tent at After Dark afterwards and big followers of the show. So big shout out to the lads. And Jimmy reminded me, that I think he was the first person to put up in Pa before Jerry Hannon even knew his name uh, last year, of course, 40 <laughs> to 1 in the comments down below. So, uh, knows the crack does, Jimmy. And, yeah, it was great to meet up with a couple of, uh, I suppose, fans of the show down in Gorham Park. But it was a great day down there, and we look forward to Red Mills Day already. And, of course, you can get your tickets, I think, on the 31st, the second batch of uh, free tickets are being uh, released. So, stay tuned to uh, gorhampark.ie and their social media channels. Uh, to uh, get involved in tickets for Red Mills Day. KCLR obviously came on board. It was brilliant to uh, partner up with the the, uh, the the big radio station in the southeast of Ireland and uh, we'll be partnered up with KCLR for the rest of the season. So that's been fantastic. And uh, Goran Park, obviously, Boyle Sports, our betting partner, and a syndicate stock racing. And a shout out as well uh, to Jack Cantillon, who came on the show last week. Yes, so Jack kindly... Uh, put forward a, a competition to win a 1% share in the half-sister to Jerry Kalam, due to run soon enough, so you can get involved by uh, picking a winner, of course, for the Dublin Racing Festival. And the person who picks the winner at the biggest price will be uh, announced as the winner of that 1% share in a half-sister to Jerry Kalam. So a fantastic prize uh, put forward by Jack uh, on last week's show. But the show rolls on, Ronan. Good week for our selections uh, at the weekend. And... I suppose you got home on Saturday. Did you see much of the action? I've been uh, catching up with it mostly uh, today, to be honest, Basil. I watched a good bit of the racing on Saturday on my phone, which is grand when you're on the go, but you miss it. I think you need to watch it again, really, to get a fair feel of it, you know. And uh, I didn't see much racing yesterday either, so I was catching up with that today. Uh, and even at Punchestown today, there was a couple of nice performances as well. I don't know if you catch them, but very happy with Jade the Grugy, as I'm sure you are as well. Uh, our minds uh, combined there together with her. She was, she's, I'd say a few of the, you know, the listeners and viewers uh, would love the performance as well, because I've seen her mentioned a few times in different portfolios. And uh, it all seemed quite obvious, didn't it? You know, we saw her in Leprestown. She was quite impressive there. And she, she showed a real good turn of foot here, I think, to, to get away from these fields. Now, I wouldn't be sure about the absolute form in behind. But what I was really pleased with is just the vibes from the Mullins camp. Very, very keen on her. And uh, she's got to be one of the big players now, as I'm sure her odds reflect in the in the Mayor's Novels Cheltenham. 
Absolutely, I've muted myself. What's new? These are the performances that we star rated, Rona Groom, and we've given you the uh, the two mares who were so impressive on Saturday at both, so obviously, Cheltenham, Lossie Mount, and Asher Diamond was so impressive as well, uh, of course, up at Doncaster and Embassy Gardens as well. You mentioned you caught up on some of the action. That's, uh, of course, a nace from yesterday. I've taken the uh, the bottom three, Sergino, Jade the Grugy, and Gidley Park. But a good open conversation we're going to have here now. And I, I suppose, look, four stars uh, for the two mares, Lossie Mount and Astro Diamond. Start, kick us off with Lossie Mount. I was, I have to say, I was blown away now. But I suppose the form, how strong is the form? Is that is that why you're docking her a star? Not the form. Uh, it was the pace in the race. They, they dawdled here. That's the reason I think um, I'd just be slightly worried about it because she's uh, she showed last year she's able to do that off a, a slow pace. She can run keen, but she can still quicken up. So she's obviously very good, as she showed here. She's basically won on the bridle from, from Love Envoi. But on that, I think... It's while it's a positive that she can do that over two miles one off a of dawdle and quicken up. She's clearly real classy type of mare. I just wondered would her speed be a bit blunted now over two and a half miles? So obviously, the big debate since the race has been, you know, why isn't she going for the mayor for the champion hurdle? She'd be taking on Constitution Hill. I think that's a bit, a bit OTT now. I don't know what you think, but um, uh, on the on the flip side of that, going up to two and a half miles, I'm not sure that's an absolute positive for her either. I think. Uh, if she did race keenly over that trip, would she get home or would her finishing kick be as strong as it has been over two miles, uh, two miles one, as she showed there? Probably it would be. She probably does have enough class to get through it. And I can see why she is the price she is now. But I just would hold that little concern against her. And I think you're entitled to do that at the type of price she's likely to go off uh, for the mayor's hurdle. Um, I suppose I, I'd kick on with Astro Diamond because there's a good contrast. She's obviously the second favourite in and she won down at Doncaster. Um, I'm like I was quite impressed with her, and, and thought you know, Elda talks about Lossie Mouth after, but like I think she, unlike Lossie Mouth, I think she was actually winning in spite of the trip. I think she's fine at two miles, but she's definitely going to be better at two and a half miles. Um, and 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 I just like the way she travelled through the race. There, Patrick always looked happy with her, and she's come away uh, on the run in from uh, a couple of decent mares. Obviously, Gala Marco uh, links her into Lossie Mouth, who she was in third. She was very closely matched with Lossie Mouth last season. And uh, like Patrick said after the race, I, as you know, Basil, always seem to take on these juvenile hurdlers. And obviously, Lossie Mouth is very good and uh, probably one of the best juvenile hurdlers we've seen come into the open vision in recent seasons. But at the end of the day, she's, she she still is a, a young a young mare, I guess. Uh, she's only five um and and an astro diamond like if you see her form from last season she mixed it with some of the really really good novices you know like if you go back to the royal bond like she was in there in and amongst irish point and marine national and champ kylie like all grade one winners like is she a grade one winner herself at a fairy house over two and a half miles there in the season that's why i backed her for the mayor's novice last season sadly she didn't make that trip but she's clearly a very good mayor and uh I think she has a live chance in the in the mayor's hurdle. I wouldn't be one to turn her off when when you when you weigh up the two of them. All the chats about Lossie Mount, but I think this Asher Diamond could be just slightly underrated. <sighs> Look, Lossie Mount. As I said, I think it's more of a trip thing with me that that she might be better off going for a champion hurdle. But at the same time, I don't think she'd be good enough either. If that kind of makes any sense, uh, like with re- regards to Constitution Hill, and and I can see why they want to. Mm. To hold her back a year, you know, just that record of five year olds in, in the champion hurdle is just but she is now you mean like she is quite good, obviously. She's very good. And um, five year olds can win a champion hurdle and not very good five year olds have won a champion hurdle, the ones that have won, um, the likes to catch it. And mm. we all remember our Connor was I'm sure he was gonna go close to the year. He sadly uh, you know, took his fatal fall in the champion hurdle. So like it's not impossible, but I can see why they wouldn't do it. And just on the larger, like it's a huge debate now and it always seems to people get so theatrical about this stuff of why we have a mayor's hurdle. And I, I used to be the same to be honest. I used to think we don't. Why do we have mayor's hurdles at a, at a festival? Why do we have a mayor's novice hurdle? And why do we have mayor's chase? And I still do think there, though, there's a good case to be made for those races not to be at Cheltenham and, and why mm. they take away from other races. But at the same time, uh, from a breeder's angle, and I, I kind of fully understand this from the job I'm in working for the Irish Field, a lot of our readers are breeders and, and I'm working that thing. I can see why the bigger picture 
for a mayor's hurdle race to be at Cheltenham is for the breeding industry. You know, that's increased the value of mayors like umpteen amounts, you know, down the years. And, and now it's become more popular or more attractive to have a mayor in training. And you need, they, the breeder's case for this would be that you need to have a mayor's race so that people will buy their fillies at the sales and there's a, a program there for them and you can sell the dreams at Sheldon Festival. So there's a bigger picture than just the, the plain old, oh, you know, these races are taken away from, from the Shamrock Hurdle. And so, you know, it's not, it's not all plain and simple. I think in fairness, you have to look at the horse and her biggest strengths, the way she tried. I mean, she absolutely tanked in the triumph for her last season. Coming down the hill, she was running away with Paul Town. And, and the way she jumped, I think she settled a lot better at the weekend. Obviously, it was her first run um, out of juvenile company and first run of the season. So um, I think her biggest strengths are the way she travels and the way she jumps. To me, she looks like a two-miler. It would be a question mark going up and trip. I've no doubt about that. Um, I also wouldn't doubt that she would uh, look, I, I just think it wasn't at that side on camera angle, Roland. She was like a cheetah coming down to the last uh, flight of hers, like something watching. It was like watching something out of a wildlife program, uh, the way she just rounded the bend for home. And that side on camera, she was just doing it so easy. But for me, her biggest strength is the way she jumps and the way she travels. So, yeah, interesting, Roland, that you've you've given her a four star and, her t- and the same, I suppose, to Ashro Diamond. Embassy Gardens, three and a half stars. Talk us through the performance. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, Basil. But he he was good and he jumped really well and um, he put put the race to bed quite easily, didn't he? Like he was way too good for Sandor Clegan here. It was a decent yardstick, but I would suggest probably not uh, an absolute grade one horse that they thought he might be at the start of the season. He was well beaten earlier at Punchestown by Favre de Champdu, who in turn uh, hasn't really cut it at grade one level either. So, um. While Embassy Gardens was impressive here and he jumped well and William Mullins was quite taking when he said after the race that he, you know, he'd be made for something like the National Hunt Chase and that's the race he should go for because he's favourite for it, etc. Um, I just wonder about the foreman behind him here. Um, let's be clear about it. I just don't know. I just can't get him right now. Um, he's been running over all sorts of trips this year all below this and I'm not sure whether they know is he finishing his races out as well as he could be and as I said about Sandor again just not sure he's at that top level yet um, possibly needs to go right handed as well um, on Embassy Gardens he qualified now for the National Hunt Chase and he's into a short price I just think he's a bit short now in the market uh, and just on what he achieved here I um, appreciate he is getting a bit better I suppose he's an 8 year old as well um, and yeah, I don't know. I'm just not sure about him. I do think he's a bit short in the market now, so that's why I, I possibly only gave him three and a half stars there. Yeah, I have to say, I think he reminds me a lot of Statler, the way he, I suppose the way he's improved for a fence, the way he jumps. I mean, he jumps, he, att- quite, he attacks his fences. And look, I would be I would be backing him at three to one, but at the same time, I, I don't think I'd be queuing up to uh, to take him on on the day. And that looks, it does look a competitive race. I mean, well, I mean, it's interesting, Corbus Cross, would he even go the National Hunt Chase through the seas, entered up in the City Isles uh, this weekend, or uh, up in this weekend upcoming, and um, the race itself, I thought Salvador Ziggy might be a horse that could be, um, you know, well in a race like this, if he returned to his best form, he was second in the Pertemps last year. It's just a, quite a tricky race to to work out at this point in time, but uh, you have to love the way he's doing it, and he's definitely improved for offence at Embassy Gardens, and I'd say he's definitely, at this point in time, going to be the pick of uh, Patrick Mullins. Sir Gino, um, I've had to watch this back a couple of times because I've heard a lot of people saying this is the performance of the weekend. I just loved, I think he's shown a lot of progression from from, from his first to second start in the uh, in the UK. Both of his wins, Roland, have now been on good to soft ground. He's obviously now proven uh, at uh, Cheltenham on the new course over the distance. So he's got to go into Cheltenham. He's 100% uh, the standout juvenile that we've seen so far this season. We'll talk a lot about one maybe potentially to come at the uh, Dublin Racing Festival at the weekend. But in terms of the performance, I mean, I thought I thought the first day he was quite green. Uh, made a very bad mistake down the back at Kempton. I think Nico de Boinville um, tried to teach him. He held him up being off the pace and it was quite a, a slow enough pace. And uh, really it just turned into a sprint off the home bend. And so he showed a lot of ability from from the second last flight uh, to the last at Kempton. He showed plenty of, uh, well, he showed a good, re- a really decent turn of foot. He was a winner on heavy ground in France. So I think 
obviously has proven himself on good ground and on, on testing ground. Milantino uh, went a really, really strong gallop. So there was no question mark in, in terms of, you know, there was no, this wasn't a slowly run race. This was a truly run race. And he's absolutely tanking coming down the hill. He's swinging uh, on the bridle. He turns in. Um, he's, he's, he's tanking coming to the last. And he obviously jumps the last and sprints away from a 101 rated uh, flat horse called Bird at Road and uh, made him look quite average. Um, the interesting thing, though, is Burdett Road has finished a Lent uh, in front of the uh, the third place on, on this occasion, um, Malantino, and obviously beat Malantino by seven lengths when they last met back in November. Um, I, th- I just think there's no excuses for the for the second horse, and I just wonder, has he progressed uh, since we've seen them last, um, Burdett Road? And that would be my one question, Mark, but you have to love uh, the way Sergina picked up off the back of the last. And uh, I heard someone saying afterwards it was a proper... National Hunt bred horse has put a flat rated a, a hundred and one rated flat horse in his place at, at Cheltenham, and I, I just think um, Harry Cobden said afterwards that the, the winner was uh, must be an absolute machine to do that to Burdett Road. But I just wonder it'd be the one nagging doubt. Um, you know how has Burdett Road progressed? Has he even run to the same level as he did last time out? Nonetheless, uh, the winner was a ten length winner and has proven. Um, his ability to stay has proven his ability to jump a lot cleaner on this occasion. And I thought it was a very, very good performance. I can't see how you could give it anything less uh, than a five-star rating. Jade the Grouge, you a groom, four-star rating because it's interesting because my initial reaction to the performance was, this was brilliant, you know, but but really and truly, they went to crawl to the third last flight. This is a, I, I'm beginning to fall in love with this mare, though. Can I say this? Because um, she's a fine big mare, gorgeous set of lugs on her. And she reminds me very much of Vroom Vroom Mag. I was a huge fan of Vroom Vroom Mag back in the day. First of all, because you picked her as well. What did you think, Jade the Grugy? Yeah, I was pretty impressed with her. I was uh, I saw the same as you, I suppose, the... Um... The form of the race may be slightly questionable, but then again, there were some nice maiden hurdles winner inners in behind, like look to the west, who I actually put up for the mayor's novice, uh, kind of uh, as a bit of a swinger earlier on in the season. She was a little bit disappointing. She got the run of things in front. Um, and, you know, the second horse is probably OK. Judas is Allen, the other William Mullins horse in behind is is OK. She'd won then a Limerick, so probably not as bad as I thought initially watching it. And... Jade the Groove, she's probably just gone about her business really nicely, hasn't she? She's picked up really well off uh, probably steady in her own pace. And I, I thought the same as you going back left-handed, she, she'd be probably better off. And as I said earlier, the, the one thing I wanted to take was the the vibes seem to be really strong on her, uh, the, the, the comments after the race. Mm. I think Willie Mullen said, didn't he quite take and He said that uh, Kenny Alexander has another nice mare to look forward to now after Honeysuckle, which was interesting. Um, she reminded me a bit. You remember when Lorena won for the Mayor's Novice Hurdle for for the uh, Sutton, and the the vibes that year for her were so strong they just couldn't see her beaten. And I wouldn't be surprised if she ended up in the same sort of vein that the when you get to the preview nights now, people just start to in this this Jade the She's she's very very good, and mm-hmm. I could see her going off a bit shorter than she does now. For all that, the race is pretty good. You know, like the prior days ahead was a mare I really liked at the start of the season. Um, and she I think she's a player. And Dysart Enos we should mention as well won won pretty smoothly, albeit at a, a very short price. Um, over the weekend as well, and I think she she she's actually been campaigned well that she doesn't have to carry a penalty, whereas Jade de Grugy would have yeah. to carry a penalty for uh, for that. But they're very pleased with what what I saw at Ferryhouse. Yeah, so was I. I mean, her only real jump and mistake was at the last when she got in a little a little bit tight. But I love the way she picked up from two from two out to the last, and you know, really they were just sprinting, weren't they? Uh, turning in, and you know, I think she showed a real turn of foot on slow enough ground, stepping back and trip as well to two mile two furlong, stepping back to two again uh, at Cheltenham is uh, well to me. It wouldn't be; it'd probably be a bonus given uh, how you know, given how she travelled as well at at Leperstown. I think running over two and a half miles, uh, you know, they took each other on. With almost uh, over a circuit to race, I think there was ten hurdles left to jump when herself and Butcher Hollow, uh, who's since run well by the way at Nace over the weekend, and I'm not saying he's totally backed up the form or anything, but that looks good for him. She's trounced him, and as I said, she's proven her stamina uh, at Leperstown, and she's proven her her turn of foot and her class. I think at Fairy House to do what she done, 
uh, off the back of a slow pace. Right. Last one to take a look at, Ronan, before we do move on to Tracker Horse, Gidley Park. Not so impressed with him, but at the same time, wouldn't be throwing my docket in the bin. I think Connections did say afterwards that at the performance at Gidley Park at the weekend, of course, in that grade two at Cheltenham, left them more uh, questions said uh, than or give them more questions, should I say, than answers. And he's another one that remains unbeaten, though. I mean, he's four from four on the race course, three from three over hurdles. Um, there was absolutely, like Fairy House, there was zero pace in the race, but I don't think this horse, this horse, if it's a slow pace in the Ballymore at Cheltenham, he's, he's absolutely no chance. He needs a truly run race. Uh, he's a galloper. Harry Fry has said that. And I think uh, the better the race he's in and the quicker they go, the better this horse is going to be. And I did say that even before putting them up. Uh, for the Ballymore. People are calling him for the Albert Bartlett. This is not a slow boat now. I've seen a couple of stones uh, thrown in the in the comments. This fella, I think he could be deceivingly quick, but I do believe he needs a, a true end-to-end -end gallop, uh, which, you know, tell me a race that's not truly run at the festival. I think Johnny Burke did say that. I mean, they're going to go a lot quicker. He ended up in front after the first flight. He made a mistake at the fifth, the seventh. Um, again, I think his jumping will improve in a better race. Um, and he was headed approaching the last really, um, and, and it looked like for a moment or two he was going to be beat. But you know he's he's really knuckled down. I mean he'll have learned plenty from this, uh, and he's gone away. And I think he's won snug enough at the end. So yeah, maybe slightly underwhelmed. Um, just with what I saw, it had to took a while to 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 get him his head in front and put the race to bed. It didn't really happen till right right at the line, I suppose. He did fight hard, which you'd like it, and he is unexposed. I suppose he's a young horse. He's only having this. You know, he's only had a few runs uh, in his career thus far, even over hurdles as well. So I wonder, yeah, I just wonder, yeah, is there probably better Irish novices coming over either for the Arbel Bartlett or the uh, the Ballymore? So, uh, yeah, I was uh, slightly underwhelmed, I suppose, is the, the, the short answer to it. Yeah, well, I can't give many more than a three and a half star rating, but as I said, not putting the docket in the bin. Right after this, we're going to be discussing, uh, of course, uh, tracker horses over the course of the weekend. And we'll discuss that next. Grange and Patrick Mullins. So can we have justified favouritism? But sharp up there, that's in front. We're ready for John McConnell and Alex Harvey. Western victory, Silver Lark. That will be the finishing order. Yeah, so it's time for Tracker Horse Runner Groom. It's been a profitable section of the show so far this season. What have you uh, gone with this week? Yeah, I, probably not my best week for just getting a, getting really into the depths of uh, finding a Tracker Horse or one in that might be you know a bit underrated next time. But I uh, had a good look at the uh, Nace card yesterday and just a horse there for Henry de Bromley called Miss Tempo. Now, she's not going to be winning any graded races or anything like that, but uh, I thought she ran well enough. She kind of bounced back to form um, in the handicap hurdle there, won by Millstream Lady. Um, she would appeal to me as one who'd be better on decent ground. And uh, now that she's bounced back into form, she won a couple of races there kind of last summer. Um put a couple of wins back together, uh, won the Tipperary, she won quite well, uh, and I thought she'd be one that would kick on. She was actually second to Love and Vaugh back in the day in a, in a Wexford bumper. So I think she's always had a bit of talent, it's just when she uh, has her going day, and now that she's just bounced back into a bit of form, uh, she previously finished kind of mid-division in beside Harvard Guy at Navin. Um, I think on a bit of decent ground, you might get her at one of the spring festivals now or just the spring meetings coming up. I think she could be interesting. Uh, she's still a bit unexposed, so keep an eye on her, Miss Temple. Yes, yeah, so we're going to take a question from Warren Lyons. So we're just catching up on questions now, but he asks a good question in relation to an each way anti post double uh, for the uh, the Cheltenham Festival. And when well, he's gone with Edward Stone, 20 to 1 for the champion chase and Carbus Cross at 8 to 1. Personally, I think you're playing for seconds in the champion chase. John Bon obviously blotted his copybook at the weekend. And Carbus Cross, 8 to 1 for the National Hunt Chase. This really is tough bingo because you're playing Emmett Mullins bingo and you're playing JP McManus bingo at the same time, Ronald Groom. What way would you be leading with <laughs> Carbus Cross? And first of all, thoughts on his double. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
you probably are. You're playing with the each way angle there, the place angle. But uh, Ederson, I'd imagine, will they? Is that the kind of plan to go back to champion chase now after his uh, defeat the last day over the over the two and a half of Bambridge? Uh, I'd imagine they might just 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 cash in or or not cash in, but you know, just go back to two miles now. Um, Corbett's cross. Like I was a big fan of him at the start of the season. <sighs> Two and a half miles, you probably have to take on Gaelic Warrior, I guess. But maybe Gaelic Warrior, who knows, he could be going back to 2 1 at the, at the Dublin Racing Festival this weekend, and that will uh, open up a, a huge can of worms, I suppose, in that point. But uh, yeah, I, I think he's classy enough, Corbett's Cross, that he could go anywhere. <laughs> You're right, it's a good point. He's in JP Silks and he's in. Uh, in the Emmett Mullins, uh, you know, trainer. So, and JP obviously has Factifile, who we really like for the um, for the brand advisory. So perhaps that mightn't be the race to go for. Yeah, I, I actually have no idea where Corpus Cross will end up. So I can't help uh, I can't help the the listener out there at all. If I was to if I was to pin my if I was to to to, to pin my colours to the master, I probably would say he would run in the in the national hunt chase because I just I think the fact to file for the three mile race and I don't know if his jumping is slick enough for the the two over you know for for the the turners over two and a half miles of the new course. So he has enough runs now for the national hunt chase. Derek O'Connor, I'm sure, will be uh, calling him at Mullins every night of the week. And well, if he rocked up in in, in the national hunt chase, I mean, if we had declarations uh, for the national hunt chase and Carbus Cross was on the list and Derek O'Connor has jocked up, you know, he'd be, he'd be nearly capped the material for himself because I think he'll get away with, he will get away with, um, I think not jumping maybe, I mean, he's, he's not always making ground at his fences. That's the one thing with Corbett's cross, but I think over three miles and six furlongs, you know, he has enough experience now. I just would, would worry for him in, in, in a Turner's or a Brown advisory. Would his jumping be slick enough? And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if next season, maybe the, they uh, reverted back to, to, to hurdles because I think he is a classy horse. We've seen that. Uh, but the question is, uh, is you know, which is the right race for him? In terms of Edward Stone, I think they're playing for second there in truth. And I think El Fabiola wins the champion chase. So look, decent price about Edward Stone. Corbus Cross, I'd say it's probably the likely uh, destination. But then again, uh, does he even go to Cheltenham? It's next uh, section of the show, Ronan Groom, we're going to take a look at a portfolio. And it's Mark Lewis uh, from Kildare. And he's been a good follower of the show for quite some time. And he's gone facile Vega for the Yarkel. I'd love to see him up in trip to the Turners. And I wouldn't back him for an Arkel. And I just think he's, he doesn't jump uh, slick enough. Yet it's similar to Corbett's cross, classy horse. But he's not making lengths at his, his fences. And I think in an Arkel, you definitely need to do that. Uh, I'd say you'd agree, Roland. But come in on Il Atlantique because obviously 20 to 1 for the Ballymore could be a good price. I think he's ground dependent. And I kind of like your shout of going for the Supreme if we got soft ground on a Tuesday. In the Ballymore, thoughts on how this will play out? Yeah, I, um, I've i seen Il Atlantic on a few slips, uh, portfolios uh, down in the comments, and most most of which are for the Ballymore. Uh, I like I like the run at Nace a lot. I think he he did a lot right there, and he just got coloured by um, a, a candidly ridden ridden Tommy Wrong, and that the pair of them will come clear. I think that's quite strong form. I've seen a lot of people talk about him in a finish and wonder is he resolute, and I probably have a slight concern on that as well. I just thought back at two miles in a supreme out in front might just suit him better. So that was my kind of reading of it. But I could see him I could see I'd say out of two races, Ballymore might slightly be favoured at this stage. That's the vibe I was getting. You'd be hoping that Imperio Power runs respectably well again once again when he takes on statement for the second time this weekend uh, to do the form, uh, to give uh, Tiupu a form boost. Look Mark, I'm on Tiupu at nine to two. You're on him at four to one. I think he's the one to be, uh, provided um, he, you know, he. he um, I was going to say he gets. I do think he's again. I do think he's a better horse on softer ground. Um, I think he's a, probably a stronger horse this year. He's much better fresh. And look, obviously with with uh, Talem coming out of the race, or obviously meeting that setback, it's 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 good news for you with the likes of Tiupu. Uh, you don't want to see any horse get injured, of course. But uh, in terms of this particular race, I would say Jack Kennedy will side with Tiupu, and going there fresh is definitely going to be. A big, big plus for him. Daddy Longlegs, would you give him another chance running for the Supreme? Personally, I don't think he's good enough. 
No, uh, I yeah, I think he's a bit to do now. He's probably a significantly bigger price than he was at that point. So, Hackadoo to, to Bert, uh, week five. Hackadoo to Bert out for the season. Unfortunately, she looked an absolute cracking bet there, ten to one. That's and unlucky. She... Yeah, that's unlucky. <clears throat> yeah, it is. <sighs> well, I, I met that fate myself. Uh, in by Allen. Uh, 10 to 1 for the Ryanair chase. Alaho not mm. going now. This is the number one. Shively Park Hope, you'd have to think. Winner of the race last year. 10 to 1 looks a really good price to me. And at his current price, he'd nearly be considering him because the race is completely cut up, Ronan. I agree completely. I was toying with putting him in myself at that point before Alaho had um, come out of the race, I guess. Uh, I was just wondering at that point, would Shively Park on their own two of them? But they probably would have, uh, now that I think of it. And uh, even with Alaho in the race, I thought uh, he was a potential uh, winner again. They're probably going to go straight there. He's a horse that usually goes well fresh. So, uh, well done. That's a nice That's a nice pick, isn't it? 10 to 1. Um, you could see him really... going off like the price he is now. So, yeah. He's got some lovely picks because fact to file seven to one for the Brown Advisory again, favourite on the exchanges at the moment. I, this uh, to me is the obvious race for him, and uh, I think the further to go, the further he goes, the better he's going to be. And this to me looks a Gold Cup horse for next year. Stormheart, look, he's only had the one run. Obviously, he's come with a, a decent bit of experience from France, and things didn't go his way in his maiden hurdle. That was a weak maiden hurdle, though, and he'll have to step up now again. He's seven to one. I think he's plenty short. I have to say, he should plenty. Of, he should a real turn of foot on bad ground at Punchestown. I think it was on New Year's Eve. He was the standout performer on the day. Um, but seven to one for the triumph. Look, it's it's definitely alive. Um, but would I be interested in backing him? Uh, currently, no. Langer Dan Coral Cup. Deary, deary me. This is the horse that crops up every single year, Ronan. And what about the British <laughs> handy? What what about the British handicapper? Because. I, th- I think I do, be- I do believe he's uh, dropped into the exact same mark after three runs this season. It's the, you know, the same mark when he, when he won the Carl Cup. So what the hell is going on there? You might think there's some sort of conspiracy going on. I don't know. It's mad. But um, I mean, so someone should ask. The questions obviously should be asked to this horse if he does go and got up in the uh, in the Coral Cup again because it is <laughs> very questionable campaigning or there's a, it's quite uh, disconcerting to see that that sort of thing can just be uh, glossed over but yeah um, who knows and, uh, it's uh, it's just funny isn't it? it you have to laugh sometimes um, could be a shrewd selection yeah. I'm not sure it's a shrewd selection now to be honest but We'll Picking him with we'll he's, gone off, he's gone off 66 to 1, 40 to 1, and 40 to 1 on his last three starts. I can tell you all you need to know. What's well, been well going I'll put on. it to you like this. I'll put it to you like this, Ronan Groom. I might struggle to pick the Carl Cup, uh, and I'd say you would as well if we uh, if we decided upon a selection on the uh, the night before the Carl Cup, let alone uh, back on the, the 16th of the first. So that was obviously this month. Uh, but look, best of luck with that one, Mark. Uh, Jade the Grugy, 8 to 1. We obviously have 10 to 1. Mayor's Novices Hurdle. You have to be delighted with that. I'd say she'll go off favoured. And I'd say she's a right old weapon. Gaelic Warrior, 11-4 to for the Turners. Are you getting the wobbles, Ronan Groom? Is Willie Mullins going to come back to two miles, take on Marie Chanel, Marie Nationale? Is he coming back to two miles, the Irish Ark, or does he beat Marie Nationale? And does he go for the Ark, in your opinion? I could see him coming back to two miles, one, and I could see him definitely going close to winning. He's that talented. Um... Am I getting the wobbles? Not necessarily because it's not exactly. I have them at nine to two. It's not exactly going to be the difference of a winning portfolio and a I losing think, one. I, I suppose would be nice. To... I think he'll beat Marie National if the race is against uh, Marie, Chine- Marie National over two miles at um, at Leperson. Yeah. Yeah, I think he'd have a like if you priced it up now. He probably yeah, it'd probably be each or two, I suppose. Um, but does he go there? Yeah, it'll be it'll be cracking race if they do go for it. And if Gaelic Warrior were to win that and, and jump well, he would probably have to go for go down the Arca route then as well. So yeah, I'm slightly I suppose if you're on at those you have a nice price there, or whatever. As I said, I'm not too I won't be absolutely distraught. It's not like I'm on at like twenties or something like that. I just had mine too. So uh, and same with same with uh uh, Mark there as well. He's on. He's on at eleven to four. It's not a, like it's a nice one to have, but it's not going to make or break you. I suppose. 
Interesting. Right, that is the Portfolio Spotlight. We'll do that every single week leading up to the Cheltenham Festival. So make sure to keep updating uh, your portfolios in the uh, comments below. We love the interaction. We've been getting some fantastic uh, comments down below. Uh, Great support for the show. And even the lads uh, that I mentioned that we met met down in in Gorham Park, big followers of the show. So uh, continue to get your selections down below and uh, make sure and give the video an old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Always helps us out. The prize on the Eve of the Cheltenham Festival, of course, is that trip, a VIP trip, of course, uh, to the uh, Boyle Sports Irish Grand National, courtesy of our betting partner, uh, Boyle Sports. So continue uh, getting your selections in. And after this run of groom, we're going to be giving our week 11 selections for the Cheltenham Festival. Yes, and if you haven't entered the competition, of course, uh, to win a 1% share in a half-sister to Jerry Kalam, who's, uh, of course, the half-sister is scheduled to run uh, soon. But look, the Dublin Racing Festival, to enter the competition, you have to pick the biggest price winner at the uh, Dublin Racing Festival. And uh, yeah, Jack Cantillon will be announcing a winner on the show of that 1% share in a half-sister to Jerry Kalam. So the link is in the description down below. There's also a link uh, to, uh, of course, avail of the uh, Boyle Sports uh, anti-post price boost that we're going to obviously put up our Week 11 selections now. So make sure to get involved. Both links in the video description. Decent old prize, Ronan Groom. I didn't tell Jack. I thought Jerry Colon was a boat on the show when he was on it. But um, he's going straight to the Cheltenham Festival, actually, Jerry Colon. And uh, I suppose Capanano coming out and winning hasn't done the form any good. Or Annie Herm, should I say. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't run him. I didn't want to run him again, Jerry Colom. I think he was a horse, didn't he? He kind of improved away last season as he was as he was running, and he ran at Sandown at the same weekend last season, and uh, did really well to win there. So I'm surprised they are, are going straight there. They've got Gentleman Game, who's on my portfolio, so I'm interested to see how he gets on on uh, on Saturday. So uh, yeah, yeah, interesting. Oh, go on then. Give us your week 11 selections. It's not from the Alps this week, but I wonder will it be as lucky? Uh, Jeez, Basil, it's getting harder, I think, this uh, game. We're kind of nearly waiting for the handicaps to, to come around now and, and, and get the weights, um, here, here. Uh, I suppose, in a couple of weeks' time. But uh, I, I was just trading around with a couple of 4-1 to shots this week. I was looking at a few races, mm. but they were all this sort of mark. And, and, and then I just I decided, I, I, I haven't looked at the, the two mares, uh, I decided I'd just take a chance with Astro Diamond. Um, for all the reasons I staked earlier on, I think she is, uh, she's a, just a, probably, maybe a, just a bit further down the line, uh, development-wise, lost him out given her older age and her form last season in Novice Hurdles is really strong, particularly in the Royal Bond. I liked what she did at Doncaster. I think she won there. Quick ground, two miles is probably sharp enough for uh, up to two and a half miles. First day is probably be good to soft, ground well watered, etc., uh, I think she just could be a little bit underrated. And as I said, regarding Lossie Mouth, just a bit just a bit concerned to her on two and a half miles. Would she pull too hard? Um, Will she be able to see out a race as well? I, granted, she was very impressive, but I just wonder. I just have that slight question mark over. Yeah, nine to two, you're getting about Ashra Diamond. I mean, she's certainly in an upward curve on a groom, and she's been trained exactly for the race. And good to soft ground, she'd have to be a big, big player, you'd feel. And uh, she seemed to settle a little bit better at the weekend as well, I thought. So uh, that's definitely a positive. I'm sure Patrick will be queuing up for the ride on her in the mayor's uh, hurdle. That's, of course, Ashra Diamond. A decent chance, you'd have to say. Now, Ron, I'm exactly the same as you uh, in that I'm just waiting for the, the handicap, uh, obviously, entries and. Um, in terms, it is getting trickier. There's no doubt about that. We might see about getting a, an extra episode because we we have to get to the 20 episodes, you know, for our 20 selections. We might see about doing that, uh, maybe adding that, maybe doing a show on the Saturday, uh, the Sunday, and the Monday before Cheltenham. So three late selections, uh, you know, to to make up the 20. But in terms of this week's uh, selection, I've taken a bit of a flyer. And uh, I've gone back to the clues, I think, that we did get last weekend. And a uh, horse I've been looking forward to see for, for quite some time. I've gone to the Triumph Hurdle first and, f- first and foremost. 
And um, I can see a smile in there, but um, a horse I've been looking forward to seeing on the track for quite some time, ever since I saw Sir Gino uh, bolting up at, at Kempton, even prior to the weekend. And I had this horse in mind for, for, for quite some time for uh, the Triumph Ferdinand. He's entered at the Dublin Racing Festival. He's only had one run in his life. It's not been for Willie Mullins. The horse is called Salvador Mundi, who was only beaten a length in three parts in France on his sole start in a listed race. Um, in a listed race on his sole start in, in France for Deva Cotin. He obviously transferred uh, to Willie Mullins. The first and second were obviously bought by Joe Donnelly. Uh, the winner, Sergino, we know what he's done. Um, ten lengths back in third, we've seen a winner come out of the race. And the fourth has actually won uh, since as well. So the form all round, I think, is working out really well. I don't claim to be a French uh, racing expert, but the vibes about this horse, uh, Rona Groom, has been very, very strong. And the horse is called Salvador Mundi. Um, he's entered up at the uh, the Dublin Racing Festival. He'll be wearing the uh, the Donnelly uh, silks. And look, it's a bit of a flyer. We've seen a lot of the uh, Mullins Juvenile so far. This is the one we haven't seen. And I've heard a couple of people saying, uh, you know, would they keep this horse as a, as a novice? This has always been the plan to run him at the uh, Dublin Racing Festival. He's entered. And uh, yeah, I thought 14 to 1. Look, it's, it's a double figure price. Still looking for value. Have to say, I've struggled this week. Uh, you know, outside of this selection, it, it's it's getting tougher. There's no doubt about that. And look, I just I just think fourteen to one is is a very reasonable price, given uh, the fact that we've seen Sergino being the standout juvenile, certainly in the UK. Stormheart obviously looked good at Punchestown. Bunting was decent, although the form probably looks weak enough down from Limerick at, at Christmas time. But this horse has been given uh, time. As mentioned, he's, he holds that entry. Uh, this weekend in the at the Dublin Racing Festival in the Spring Juvenile. He's obviously finished second in listed company and the winner has got on last weekend, Sergino, uh, and absolutely bolted up putting 101 rated flat horse in his place. Now, looking back at this particular race in France as well, Roland, uh, Salvador Mundi went off a shorter price favourite uh, than the winner, Sergino. He's a, he's a real proper national hunt pedigree as well, no risk at all, out of a Santa Sant Mayor. And I, I have to say, I, I loved, he was a real eye catcher in the race. He was held up out the back. He sort of jumped his way into contention and he made up eye catching ground in the middle part of the race. Uh, as I say, the vibes are strong. And uh, Salvador, uh, Monday for me at 14 to 1. Yeah, a bit of a swing, Basil. But sure, why not? Um, that race, whatever comes out of that race on Sunday, is it Sunday or Saturday? The, it's Saturday, I think, is the. the, the a spring juvenile hurdle it's always a great pointer to the triumph so and it looks strong enough this week uh so whatever comes out of that i think will be at least second favorite in the market for for the triumph and possibly even challenging sergino um if you got a, an impressive performance so uh, i think it'll be all change come uh, come the weekend okay quickly let's run through the portfolios running because we've we're we're, we're, we're... We're more than at the halfway point here. I'm going to have a look. Will Mount, obviously, 16 to, one, 16 to 1 for the Supreme Officer's Hurdle. We're on the back foot there with him, in fairness. Uh, I think I do think on nicer ground, stepping back to two miles to suit him. Uh, whether he's a Supreme Horse, I, I doubt it at this stage. Uh, Mr. Policeman, uh, gone. That's gone. Hakadu to Perth is gone. She's out for the season. T Hupu, 9 to 2. She's 7 to 2 now. Or he is, should I say, 7 to 2 for the Stairs Hurdle. And obviously, um, his joint favourite with uh, Stable Mid Irish Point. I like Tiopu. I think he's a real lively player in that race once again. Only by night, she bombed out. And we obviously went in with Jade the Grugia 10 to 1 last week. Who I have to say, Ronald Groom, I'm, I'm absolutely falling in love with Jade the Grugia. I think she's an absolute cracker and she's the rightful favourite now for the race. Fast or slow, 6 to 1 for the Gold Cup. Happy enough with that. Back to file uh, for the Brown Advisory, 7 to 1. We've doubled up on that as well. Um, for the Brown Advisory, I think he's going to take a hell of a lot of beating in that. Lecky Watson, uh, 25 to 1 uh, for the Albert Bardot. He's 14 to 1 for the Italian Lacey. Lara Byrne was on the show, Roland, last week when you were away, and he said he's going for the race. Um, he'll have four runs then. What what sort of mark will they, will they consider uh, something like a Martin Pipe? But I think personally, the further it goes, uh, the further he goes, should I say, the better. I think he's made for the Albert Bardot. I think uh, Lara Byrne more or less said that on the show, 25 to 1. I'm happy with that. 14's Gidley Park. That's still alive. 14's uh, obviously Salvador Mundi off the back of today's uh, show. And uh, yeah, 10 to 1, Jade de Grugy at the moment, Roland. That's the one I'm most excited about. It's probably between Factifile and Jade de Grugy. And the beautiful thing is, Roland, 
they were the two weeks that we agreed. And look, that could be uh, 17 points multiplied by two if, if both of those win. So it would be well on course. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'll run through mine. Um, Allegory Devasi um, had been disappointing. There's no two ways around that, but still, I guess, would be a player and likely to go for the Mayor's Chase. Uh, you wouldn't completely write her off, but I think she has a bit more to do. She's a seven to one shot now or thereabouts. Gaeta Guarrier is, uh, as we mentioned earlier, is a nice price there. Um, if indeed he goes for the Turner's Chase, I think he'd be odds on if he does go for it, but we'll see after the weekend. Look to the West, that's dead. Uh, unfortunately, she just not good enough. Uh, Firefox, not quite dead, but on life support, I suppose. Well, not not that's probably a bit too harsh. We'll see how he goes. If he he's in, he's in, he's entered up this um, this weekend, so we'll see uh, where so he Gordon goes. said perhaps maybe the supreme for him, but maybe have yeah. that wrong. Well, there you go. Yeah, it could be end up. He could end up there easily as well. So. Uh, gentleman's game. I'm interested to see how he goes this week now uh, in the in the Gold Cup. But like he still remains a lightly raced horse, and I think he's better a bit more. And he screams to me like a horse who stays well, that Gold Cup type of horse. And Mouse Morris does really well with a good Cheltenham horse. So I'm interested to see that. I haven't let go of that one yet. Uh, Mighty Bandit is uh, on life support now uh, after a poor run the last day, though he did have a bit of an excuse. I think he's in the Spring Juvenile as well, so he does get a chance to... Um, to uh, bounce back, I suppose, but a bit to do. Fact to file, you've made the case for him. Pretty impressed with him. We'll see him at the weekend as well, so it could be all changed. I like Tree Card Brag at eighteen to one still. I think that uh, that's a decent, decent way into the national hunt chase to see if he runs again before Cheltenham or goes straight there. Either Atlantique, that was a bit of a swing for the Supreme, so we'll see what happens there again at the weekend. And Jade De Grugy, delight with her uh, over the weekend. And Astro Diamond is, I suppose, is. I'm more on the solid side if she gets the mayor's hurdle I think I'm not sure she'll be a huge deal shorter than that but I just wanted to get into solid win on uh, I suppose what was a, a difficult kind of we're getting into that kind of hard period I suppose um, now just before the double racing festival um, and uh, the handicaps coming out so uh, there'll be more opportunities I think in the coming weeks battle You can't captain your selections that you've put in already Ronald Groom but if you had to captain one there who would be who would be the selection you're most confident of picking up oh, some yeah. points? You'd have to, you'd have to go get a warrior, wouldn't you? I suppose. He, I st- I still think he'd end up with the Turners. Um, so going to head now, you probably would go get a warrior. But I, I suppose Jade the Grushy, I could see her going off pretty short as well. But I, I'd say still get a warrior now. I'd marginally make Factifile the captain for the Brown Advisory at seven to one. I think that's a cracking price, and I think he's going to take a hell of a lot of stopping in that race for. Uh, the uh, McManus and Mullins team. So that has been episode number 11 of the Road to Cheltenham Challenge. Make sure to get your selections down below. And um, yeah, let us know how you've enjoyed this uh, particular show as we had plenty. It was some weekend of racing road. We didn't kind of say it at the start, but at Dublin Racing Festival, I'd say we could, I'm going gotta, I'm gotta to come out and say, I think we'll get more clues from the weekend gone by than we'll actually get from, from, from next Monday because we had some weekend of racing just gone. Yeah, it was a great weekend. I was actually, as I was looped completely, it was driving home or flying home, even looking at the cards. And I was thinking, Jesus, this is a great weekend altogether. But uh, so it was kind of a bit annoying in one respect, but um, very much looking forward to Leopard Sound this weekend. I'm sure we have a bumper preview show planned uh, for that. Um, I'm going on Saturday myself to work there and very much looking forward to that. Well, I won't see anyone there because I have to make a best man speech up in Belmullet, County Mayo. So big pilgrimage, three days up there. Shout out to all the Mayo followers. If you're uh, in the vicinity, let us know in the comments down below. We, we shall see you for the Road to Cheltenham Challenge, episode number 12 next week. And we look forward to building up to the Dublin Racing Festival this Thursday. <laughs>